we're back. In this week's episode, we talk Sounds of the City, The Waltons, Rockford Files, The Downside of Living in a Large Family, Pioneer Chicken, mm-mm, Little Caesars, Going Through Puberty in a Cave, <laughs> Thanksgiving Trivia, How Many Answers Can You Get Right, and Mike Black's Overdose Thanksgiving Sandwich. <laughs> I think it's called The Overdose Sandwich. He tells you all about it. It's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting stuff. When you go to those family get-togethers, I'll give you a hint. Bring lots of Tupperware and bring some for your guests. So I was at Target yesterday, and I don't know what it is, man. Why can't people just be a little nicer to each other? I'm serious. Have you noticed this as well? I'm looking for legal pads. I like to put my notes on these little yellow legal pads. I like the smaller ones. They fit real nice at my desk. I can take notes. I can add stuff for the podcast. Or if I'm watching something, I want to take a note of it. And I'm like, okay, I'll go to I'll go to Staples. And uh, but before I went to Staples, I went to Target. And I walk into Target, and I see this lady coming out of what appeared to be the warehouse area, and she had on a uniform like with the name tag and the you know, and it was a blue uniform, which that didn't surprise me because, you know, I, I know that people work, work there wear red. Some of them wear blue, like the security guard. There's all these security guards right by the Target Starbucks and also at the entrance. So I see her coming from, you know, like the warehouse area in the back. And I said, uh, excuse me, do you know where the yellow, and as I'm saying it, I read her name tag because my eyes aren't that good. And I realize like, oh, she works somewhere else. And then she just cuts me off and says, I don't work here. And then she keeps walking and she goes, and for your information, the people that do work here wear red. Ooh. So I told her, sorry, I'm colorblind, which I'm not colorblind, but I, man, that just really, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like she didn't have to say that. If it was me, I was thinking about this. I was talking about this with my wife. If it was me, Nine times out of ten, I'd say, hey, I don't work here, but I'm pretty sure it's over there. You want to go to the office supply, school supply area that's going to be in that corner over there by those birthday cards and that right over there. That's where it was, actually, Um, I found out. Actually, but they were out of them, but that's where it should have been (laughs) is over there. And Because I'd already circled the store like three times. Finally, I'm like, I'm just going to ask somebody. And then the one there. So, yeah, that's, that's my deal. But, yeah, I'm serious. I totally would have, like... When I have time, I, I I'll walk people over. I'll I'll say, hey, here, here's where it is, and I'll and I'll you know I'll hold up selections, little swaths, see which one they like. Like if someone needs to know, hey, where's the gas station? I'll I'll sometimes follow them to the gas station. I'll put gas in their car. I'll drive them on their errands. I will do the surgery if they need to have their wisdom tooth removed. I mean, I'm down for it. I'll do. I'll I'll go the 99 yards. I won't go the extra yard, but I will go the 99. All right, this is getting silly, but no, seriously, I, I just think I would just wish she would have said said it in a nicer way. But what are you gonna do? You can't control others, right? You can just control how you react. So I'm like a an underground Karen. I'll do it on my podcast and bro- broadcast it to the world. <laughs> underground Karen. That sounds like a good name for a rock group. Please welcome Underground Karen. All right, guys, we got a great episode. Let's get into it. I know you'll enjoy it. Pull up some biscuits and gravy, maybe some fried chicken or some pizza, and enjoy this episode. But my favorite, I don't even eat that stuff, really. I like uh, I like burritos. I put a little quiz out there. I said, if you could have four free for 24 hours, what would you choose? And here's the choices. Four free for 24 hours, you could have, like, all you can eat, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. I would have said a week, but I said, let's just keep it a... Let's just keep it 24 hours. If you could have, next 24 hours, if you could have pizza, burritos, pasta, burgers, what would you choose? Well, I'll tell you what 60% of the people chose, pizza. I chose burrito, which was second place, because I figure you can go breakfast burrito, And then around lunch, you can go lunch burrito. And then dinner, you can have like a couple of burritos, like chicken burrito, you know, fajita burrito. (laughs) You could have steak burrito, carne asada burrito. You could have all kinds of burritos. But I I do love a good breakfast burrito. You don't really hear about breakfast pizza or breakfast pasta or breakfast burger. But you do hear about breakfast burrito. 
Okay, guys, let's get into it. Let's start that party in your ear holes. Happy Thanksgiving. And guess what? I'll be coming back this week uh, with more surprise episodes, little th- Thanksgiving bonuses. Everybody likes a bonus. And for sharing the episode and for commenting on YouTube, I swear to God, I can't even tell you how helpful that is. Go to YouTube, just leave some comments on the videos. It helps the algorithm. All right, guys, y'all are the best. Thank you so much. Start that party in your ear holes. By the way, if you want to show your support, every little bit helps, and I really mean that. Uh, PayPal, go to DarrenCarter.com. There's a support the show button at DarrenCarter.com. Support the show using PayPal. If you're more of a Venmo person, you like doing Venmo, it's very easy. At Darren Carter Comic. At Darren Carter Comic on Venmo. PayPal, go to DarrenCarter.com. Support the show. Every little bit counts. I'm telling you, it means a lot. It means the world. And it keeps this show going. It keeps me motivated. And it buys new equipment. And it just helps. So thank you so much. Pocket Party. And we're back. Calling Mike Black. Thanksgiving surprise. The one and only Mr. Michael Black. I'm waiting for my man. Twenty six dollars in my hand. <laughs> Is that an old blues song? He's or something? never early. He's always late. <laughs> Thing about Darren Carter is you always got away. <laughs> I'm waiting for my. No, that's a old Velvet Underground song. I like that. Um, I'm waiting for my man. That's uh, Lou Reed. Uh, the actual song is about a guy who's waiting for his heroin dealer. Oh, geez. Uh, in the middle of New York. But uh, <laughs> I, I altered the lyrics slightly for you. <laughs> that's that's funny, man. I was um I was about to call, and believe it or not, there's a there was garbage trucks outside, and I heard that beep beep boom boom clang 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 clang, and I'm like. You know what? Should I text him? No, nah, I'm just gonna. I'll just wait the one minute until they go away. Then I. You may have caught it in the very beginning of the recording. I don't know, but anyways, we're we're back. Well, if I can count on you for one thing, it's <laughs> fresh excuses. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What was it last week? There's always something. My password. Always. I think it was uh, zombies. You were uh, yeah. zombies that attacked your farm. And, uh, yeah. I called the wrong Mike Black. Oh no. No. I, got that. I think one week. Uh, your dog ate the podcast. Yeah, my dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe what happened. To him. Yeah, my dog. I know it's so funny. I was I, I ran into this voiceover artist, and uh, I was at Western Bagel in Burbank, and he's like, you know, Burbank, we all have like these double pane, triple pane glass. You can turn your your home into a, a soundproof recording studio, and I'm like, I don't know, dude. I I actually I hear a lot of like leaf blowers and stuff. I don't know how soundproof it is, <laughs> you know. Well, I think. I, he may be talking about a, a service that you can get done, or is it just they all just naturally have? He made it. He made it sound like it just comes with the territory. <laughs> like we're just, you know, Burbank is. It's an industry town, yeah, man. We're, it's just. It's all full of condos, apartments, and podcast studios. The mayor set it up a long time ago. He saw it coming. He was yeah. like, yeah, people are going to want to record in these homes. So <laughs> <laughs> everyone used double pane glass. I know. On out. You know, I actually had a, one of those garbage trucks backing up, got me into a, I, I wrote a joke in my dream once. Like I was, you know, when you're in that, I don't know if it's called twilight, but when, right when you're first started, first start coming out of the sleep and, uh, and I heard the beep, beep, beep. And my and in my dream I said, "Wow, that garbage truck driver must be cursing a lot. They're censoring his words. <laughs> They're bleeping him out, right?" And I woke right. up, and I woke up, and I'm like, "Hey, that's actually kind of funny." And so I, I, uh, I told my yeah. wife, "I go, hey, I wrote a joke in my sleep." And then I told her the joke, the beep, 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 you know. And did she laugh? She goes, uh, "You need to be writing jokes when you're awake." <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Ouch! No, hey, oh, no. She, she, she said she, she's pretty funny though. You know what she said? Um, that makes my one buddy because because our our sense of humor is a little different. Shout out to my wife. I know she <laughs> listens, but but uh, she, she's like, I'm I'm glad you ran that by me before you took it to the club. <laughs> exactly. No, like one night I come home and I go because uh, she likes to cook and I go, Hey, what's for dinner? And she's like, You ever heard of intermittent fasting? <laughs> Let's talk about it tomorrow at lunch. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> Voila. No, now I got, you're doing. Yeah. She's like, you tell her a joke like that. She's like, 
honey, I want people to think I married a funny man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. Why don't you just keep that one to yourself? You keep that one to yourself, Darren. The old garbage truck beep, beep, beep sound. Yeah. The, the, I, uh, I'm very lucky that I, or just really citified by now that I don't really hear the garbage truck that much unless every once in a while they take a route that's kind of close to my apartment. And when I do, it's never, I'm never hearing a garbage truck in my dream. It's always like someone's fighting a robot or something like that, you know? Oh, that's cool. So you're, that you're... is like the countdown of a planet about to explode <laughs> or something. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then when I wake up, I'm just really sad. I'm like, oh, this is, it's none of that. Oh, <laughs> just a garbage truck. Oh, I guess I don't. Like, uh, you remember Norm MacDonald had a, that brilliant joke no, about. T- tell us. Going to sleep. He's like, you ever, uh, ever uh, have a great dream and somebody wakes you up and then you try and get back to sleep and redream it. You know, you're, you're in a pool with Christy Brinkley and then your alarm goes off. And so you ah, and you hit snooze and go back to sleep, uh, but it's never the same. It's you, in that dream you're shooting pool with David Brinkley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> that's about it too, right? <laughs> like, that's um, that's funny. I guess I don't normally imagine the uh, garbage trucks and all that stuff. I don't really let it bother me. But then I think because I was about to record and your your mind is extra tuned into like. Okay, turn the air conditioner off, turn the fans off, and then uh, yeah. quiet on the set outside, guys. I know you're taking garbage out, but we're about to do the <laughs> Pocket Party Podcast. <laughs> See, now I'm hearing I just, alarms. I can hear the sirens outside. But I, I have kind of a funny story about that, where yeah. uh, we were recording uh, the Power Pals, which is anyone who uh, wants to listen, it's not safe for work, but it's a fun little podcast i do with two other comics but i was the best place in my apartment to record is my bathroom but my neighbors for about a year now i don't know what's been going on i'm not very neighborly to be honest i don't uh, really know them that well yeah but about for about a three hour block, there is a lady next door that just cries about everything. Oh, loud, like loudly, like, oh, oh no, oh, why? Oh, this, sucks. oh, no, like, really, <laughs> yeah. just goes, goes for broke crying, and nobody stops her, nobody like tries to make her feel better, nothing. And I don't know her well enough to do any of that, but we're recording one day. And I'd had a rough week with that lady because she'd been going extra hard, like, you know, and so (laughs) she's, we're doing our podcast. It's going along. Okay. Then finally she starts up with, Oh God. Oh no. And I just went, Hey, we are trying to record in here. (laughs) And I just, all I hear is, Oh, (laughs) <laughs> and, so, and I was like, "Why? Has, it's sad that I'm the only person that's even made any attempt yeah. to stop her from crying. <laughs> like, and that it's the worst attempt you could make. It's hey, we're recording a podcast in here. Like, no, she, one, no one said, oh, it's not that bad. No one like it'll be okay. You know, got her some soup or anything like yeah. that. Is after a year and a half of <laughs> the worst year and a half you could have." Finally, someone shuts her up with, hey, we're recording a podcast again. She's like, what episode? <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh, where is this available? Can I get a shout out? By the way, shout out to Justin Kempel, Javier Avila, and O. Felix. Speaking of shout outs, I don't know. I just saw that right now. I'm like, I got to give them shout outs. Um, is it just like zero Felix? Or I, think it's Oscar, I think it's Oscar Felix because oh. he's hired me before on Cameo, but on YouTube, he goes by O. Felix. Because uh, cause that's a pretty cool name, O Felix. It sounds like uh, almost like a Shakespearean character. O oh, Felix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind O <of> Felix. <laughs> the noble swordsman. <laughs> the noble swordsman. Correct. They, um, yeah, man. So we're doing the podcast. It's going to be Thanksgiving. And I was like, I got to have Mike Black on and, and, and 
I got some. Do you want to jump into some Thanksgiving trivia? No. Before we do that, can I tell you what how my Monday went? First of all, Thanksgiving trivia sounds like it's going to get real racist real fast. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, but like, okay, like, <laughs> it's, it's your show. Yeah, I know. I know. You're like, you're like, I know how sometimes you'll joke around. You're like, I'm a bigger guy, and I'm like, I know that almost sounds like I got to get Mike Black on for the Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> but <laughs> who were who were the first party poopers of the Pilgrims? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me see here. Did they originally wear buckles or suspenders? You tell me. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, dude. I want. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, coming back onto the Pocket Party podcast. Um, oh, I love doing it, dude. Seriously, it's like, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a special um, like you know connection that we have, and and I know I can just I, I texted you jokingly, but I'm serious though. Like I can lob softballs to you, and you pretty much can talk about anything. You're just really well versed, and you have a great storytelling style. And what it is, the secret, Darren, is I'm not afraid to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, you know, if I don't know what's happening, I'll just make something up. I know. I threw a little teaser out there. I'm like, hey, have you ever watched the movie Sandlot? And you're like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, the reason I. Wait, uh, what did I say? No, I think, uh, you, you asked me about the Waltons, and I was like, I don't know shit about the Waltons, but we can just talk about whatever you want. You're like, yeah, but you, you can talk about it, Darren. I'll just chime in and BS. You're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always thought of the Waltons as, I, I know we're not talking about it yet, but <laughs> I always thought of them as like, if you really wanted a Coke, yeah, like a really nice Coke with that good crushed ice from like McDonald's or something, mm. and someone said, Oh, uh, there's no McDonald's near here. There's a there's a Hardee's, and uh, they have uh, like Diet Dr Pepper. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I guess I'll have that. Right. The Waltons is <laughs> the Diet Dr Pepper to Little House on the Prairie. Right. Coat, you know. Yeah, totally. Like, like, um. You know, I gotta. I, I have to agree because I always loved like Little House on the Prairie had a little bit more action and it had you know, Michael Landon Michael starring Landon. on it. He yeah. was really good. Nelly. The, it was based on a book that was pretty cool, and you know, yeah, uh, it, it was exciting. You had that bully, you know, the the yeah. I think her name was Nelly or something. The girl with the blonde braids. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, like you just just hated <laughs> Laura Ingalls. Yeah, and yeah. the Waltons yeah. was more like. Da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 da. You know, they always have this like, episode's about how we bought a barrel of apples. <laughs> exactly. And then that's exactly what they do. And, they, they, and <laughs> everyone, oh, now we're going to make pie with those apples. And now we're going to eat the pie. Good night, everybody. Good night, <laughs> John know? Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's half the episode is everyone saying good night to each other. <laughs> yeah, they had like this the, the sawmill, which is you know right next to the house, and John Boy's <laughs> yeah. a writer, and he's going to go write somewhere. And you're right, it was a little bit more. Yeah, I yeah. don't know where where he thought was going to publish his yokel bullshit, but you know. <laughs> his homespun <laughs> tales of biscuits and apple pie. Yeah. So, welcome to New York City. What can we do for you? I have a bunch of stories about my family buying apples. Oh, <laughs> well, that'll never well, sell in 2022. <laughs> I don't get to call the security guard very often. So this, <laughs> this will be fun for me, and you'll have a new story. <laughs> I know. I um. Well, here's what happened. So I had to have a wisdom tooth removed on Monday, and yeah, leading up to it, man, I was I was pretty nervous because I had to, you know, they gave me like the, the anesthesia and the um, you know, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Anastasia and the Novocaine. No, or, uh, yeah, probably all that stuff. But basically, I was sedated, and I'd never been sedated before. So, I was, ever? No, I was nervous, man. So, tell me, you filmed yourself? I, I didn't. I know. I was like, I didn't want to even joke around about that because everybody. Are was, you nuts? I know. I know. The I number know. one video on YouTube, like of all time. I know. I'm but like, you'd be doing it to yourself. You'd have self. You'd have. That's confess. true. I could always delete it if I didn't like it. I know, but it was just like. Call the call the dentist. Can we read it? Tell him this? you made a mistake. Yeah, let's do <laughs> you to, Are you sure? This, yeah, yeah, have him pull another tooth. Let's just do this for the yeah. video. Just take one you can part with. You know, and say, <laughs> uh, just yank a tooth, put it right back. Yeah. No one will know the difference. It'll be viral. You know, Mike Black will retweet me it for me. Good stuff <laughs> and I'll film it. Yeah. <laughs> what if he does it? And I'm like, damn, garbage trucks outside ruining the sound. Beep. beep, beep. <laughs> 
Yeah. So no, but speaking of beep, call beep, back. Beep, yeah, come back. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, you sit in a chair and they strap you in or whatever, and then they do, you hear the monitor like dee 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 dee, dee. and then the other Did one. Did they really strap you in? I don't know if you're strapped like in because I I was able to move my arm a little bit, like so I don't think I was actually tied. I didn't even want to look, so I was just kind of relaxing and doing the deep breathing, and uh-huh. and then they put the little. Now, op- they, yeah. now when I had that done. The doctor said, bring a, a CD and you can listen to whatever you like. Did they do anything like that with you? Damn, that's how, you know, you, you got your wisdom tooth removed a long time ago. Bring your disc yeah. man. <laughs> bring yeah, your- they were like, bring we have a CD player here at the office. <laughs> State <laughs> of the art. You're like, no, this is last week. I just go to a really cheap dentist. <laughs> like- but I, I got, I brought like a very relaxing uh, CD, Sting's uh, Ten Summoner's Tales. And oh, cool. uh, I just watched very, yeah. very jazzy, relaxing. I was like, this will help me uh, relax. And then they loaded me up on drugs and they said, what CD did you bring? And I was like, I brought Stim. <laughs> <laughs> For me, they were <laughs> like about three notes of it before I was out. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're like, Darren, do you have a CD? Uh, no, but I, can we can we put on the Waltons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on this episode, they make apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> the irony being that uh that episode had that effect on anyone whether they were on novocaine or not yeah, know, sedated yeah just, oh they're making them um, 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 um. they just have the waltons playing on a loop in the dentist office <laughs> yeah. you know they everyone have- nice and relaxed i talked to somebody who grew up in a, in a country environment with a big family and i was trying yeah. to like bomb with them over the waltons and uh, they weren't having it. They're like, you know what? It's uh, they're like it wasn't as happy as as, as TV yeah, made it sound. I mean, it's, it's so, not like that at all. I guess when there's big family. families, like it's like you know, because I I always come from a place of you know because I'm adopted and I grew up in the foster home. So when people yeah. talk about like home and house and I was oh, like, you, it probably sounds wonderful. Yes, I know. Like I have a, a couple <laughs> buddies. They have you know they're Jewish and they always do the stereotype about their mothers or like, and I'm like, that's awesome. Your mother dotes and cares about you that much. I like, can I can break it down very easily. Please do. Why. Yeah. Okay. You ever uh, been shopping by yourself and you see like a shirt or maybe a candy bar or something like that, and you go, I'm gonna buy it. Yeah. And then. Buy and you take it to the register and give them money and then you leave. That never happens in a large family. <laughs> in a large family, every single purchase that you make is up for committee. <laughs> Eleven other votes to get to happen on. Well, how long are you going to wear this shirt? And when you grow out of it, can Kyle have it? And <laughs> you know, like so oh, yeah. it becomes a whole big thing. <laughs> candy bar well i hope someone brought a butter knife (laughs) (laughs) right split that 11 ways you know oh yeah and i I guess especially back then you know uh like in the 70s and 80s there was like just one television maybe or two tvs in a house so everyone's fighting over the people fighting over the remote there's like one phone back in the day at the house phone i mean (laughs) yeah the bathroom you're fighting over the maybe the two bathrooms if you're lucky yep you're right there's like a yeah, you're right. It's not like, oh, we have 10 personal bathrooms and everyone has their, like nowadays, at least you'd have your own cell phone and some sort of like independency, I guess. But It's like you're always in Congress, <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah. fighting for what you need. And, and everyone's like, we don't have the budget for that. <laughs> Who wants to go on vacation? And there are, nobody can agree anywhere. Like, actually, there's probably no vacations. <laughs> there's no vacations. Yeah. <laughs> there's large <laughs> 10 people in a family. It's like. Is the good senator from Louisiana back from the restroom yet? Because <laughs> yeah. the rest of us really need to go. <laughs> yeah, that's what the vacation is. You get to have ten minutes into the bathroom by yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like it's your birthday. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. The, All right, it's Darren's birthday. Happy birthday! So Darren gets uh, ten uninterrupted minutes in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, because you got to take the fast showers because otherwise you're lo- using you're using up all the hot water. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm rethinking this thing. You're right. This is not, man, it counts your blessings. It's prison with less shivs. <laughs> and you, you all know? have, and the only good thing is, I guess you have, you all have the same last name. <laughs> like that's, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, guess. you know, yeah. I guess that's good. Um, <laughs> you'll notice that like people from big families are a lot more, have a, a much bigger work ethic. Yep. Like they're yep. very excited to, to get out of the house. 
and go anywhere else. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. you're right. That's so true. That you can almost guarantee there's going to be less people wherever you work. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to go walk the dog or I'm going to go outside and pick apples or just something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's why that whole family was so excited about apples. Yeah, everyone gather around, uh, uh, away from each other. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. We're so taking I, the family car, I That's had the wisdom to is, remove a lot of trips. Yeah, yeah. So you know, th- the, load up the whole family in the the station wagon, oh, and we're gonna go to the mall. That's true. There's and not a lot everyone of everyone has to pair up. Yeah. and they're like, "We're pairing you up so you don't get kidnapped." But secretly. We're kind of hoping you get kidnapped because <laughs> that's like two less kids. Yeah, we lost two. Oh, dang. We're down to 12 now. All right. <laughs> oh, well, alert the authorities when we get home. <laughs> <laughs> so when I come home, so one of the doctor's instructions was, uh, you know, um, ac- actually, let me get it for you. Hold, hold on one second. I'm going to tell you this. I'll be right back. Okay. Hang on, Mike. I'll be right back. Uh, everyone. The official piece of paper right here. I want to tell you what this is. Okay, so. This is uh, what they would like out of you. Day one, ready? Ice packs, frozen peas, and corn work well. They want you to That's take... yeah. For what? Exactly. Oh, 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 after you get your wisdom tooth removed, they, you put that on your face, so oh. keep the swelling goes down. <laughs> and then, letting you know they work well. Yeah. Ibuprofen, and then they say... Uh-huh. Uh, and then and then the, the third instruction is lots of good movies. So you, so they want you to watch lots yeah. of good movies. The first day... They Do went, they have any suggestions of good movies? They didn't. They just said they, they told you just lots of good movies, and they say eat yogurt, pudding, applesauce, Jello, Jamba Juice, no seeds, protein shake, ice cream, etc. And they tell you that's what I'm saying. This is the perfect thing to get when you're like 15, 16. That's why young people. <laughs> right. That's why usually teenagers get their wisdom teeth pulled because they're like, "What? My diet includes <laughs> yogurt, pudding, applesauce, Jello, ice cream." And get this, you're also, like doctor's orders, you're also not supposed to brush your teeth for the first day. Don't brush your teeth for the first 24 hours. Doctor's orders. It's very so, punk rock advice of them. Yeah. So yeah, don't brush your teeth for the first few days. Yeah, so I got into it, man. Like the first the first day I did, my wife made me, you know, ice cream. She mashed up bananas. I'm, I think I think she went and, and, and uh, I don't know what she did. She did her own thing for a little bit, but um, I had the the place to myself, and I'm like, oh yeah, she, I think she's in the other room, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna watch uh, some boring TV, just because I never I never watch TV when I'm home. Mm-hmm. I hardly ever watch TV. I'm usually, I mean, I, I watch the computer, like I'll, I'll go on YouTube, and but I'm usually like editing or working on my stand up or just BSing on YouTube, just like watching clips of stuff. So sure. to actually sit down and have access to the actual television, I'm like, I can watch whatever I want. And that's where I, I came across uh, Me TV or whatever, like those old school like TV land type shows. And, and I was watching yeah. The Waltons. And I got to admit that one episode, I don't know if I'm going to make a habit of it, but that one episode was pretty good that I saw. Like where they, <laughs> they, they were, maybe it was the drugs. I don't know. But <laughs> You're like, uh, kind of like, uh, you remember Crocodile Dundee, that yeah. movie? Yeah, yeah. Where he, he, they put him in a real fancy hotel in New York, and there's a <laughs> yeah. there's a TV in there, and he goes, "That's a television," and they're like, "Yeah, it's you know, of course it is. It's New York," and he's like, "I saw one of those in 1968," <laughs> and he turns it on, yeah, and I Love Lucy is playing, and he goes, "That, yep, that's what was on it," and then he turns <laughs> it back off. <laughs> that's that's kind of what it was like. I'm like, the Waltons is still on. <laughs> I am. Um, yeah. Dude, it was, it was, so basically on, in this episode, you know, it takes place during the depression and this guy comes on and he's like, Hey, I'm just happy to pass through town. I wondered if I could, uh, you know, I'm thinking about retiring. Could I offer you $5,000 for your Walton's mountain, your house, your property, the mountain. And, uh, yeah. and the, and that man was played by, uh, Jim Rockford's dad. I don't know the actor's name, but on Rockford files, the, the father, that was who the actor oh, was. Oh yeah. And so that was, and they were like, no, nah, we'll never sell. But then the dad goes, well, I am curious. How much would you offer? And that's when he goes, 5000 And John mm-hmm. Boyd was like, you know, basically like, scram. This is our home, our history. No. <laughs> and they give him some spring water. Don't Come you up. realize with $5,000, you could get that thing looked at. <laughs> yeah. I know that mole on your face, Johnny. Crazy <laughs> thing on your face. <laughs> so then... So then the guy comes back the next couple of days later and he's like, I got to be completely honest with you. I'm not quite 
here to retire. I work for a firm, and we want to turn this place into a resort. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "What? Why didn't? Why weren't you honest with us?" He goes, "Well, I didn't want to scare you away." And he goes, "By the way, we has we tested that spring water. It's one hundred percent pure." And they and then they upped the price to twenty thousand dollars. What? Yeah, and then they're like, "Well," uh, and then and then he, uh, yeah, one more thing happened. Then he offered him twenty five thousand, and then now they've got to you know you know which in today's terms it's like a couple million, you know. Yeah. And so now that's what the whole. We ep- found out that on the other side of the mountain, there's a bunch of oil. <laughs> exactly. They just keep these. Really, we thought there was just wood for our sawmill and apples. No, you dumb. Five hundred million dollars. <laughs> I know they have got like GPS, all this modern technology. Oh, that'd be hilarious. If you dumb hicks will just get off this mountain. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, this is where I do my best journaling. I'm John Boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so then. He goes, well, where, where will we live? <laughs> and then he's like, well, we'll tear down your house and we'll buy you a new house and we'll help you move into it. And then he goes, and, and then on top of it, we'll give you $30,000 is what he says. And, yeah. and he goes, well, what will I do for work? And he goes, well, you know this mountain pretty well. We'll make you a tour guide and you can also make even more money with gratuity. <laughs> and uh, There you go. Tips. Exactly, and then wave of the future. Yeah, totally. You'll you'll make money on tips. It's like, yeah, like with Venmo and Cash App, etc. You know? And then you'll start. Of course, nobody from nobody from out of the country will do it, but everyone here. Yeah, and besides, you're on a mountain. You know how strong your podcast signal will be. <laughs> you could be broadcasting. It's gonna be wonderful. The Waltons podcast. I'll, I'll throw in my sister. She's yeah. very good. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> and there won't be any women crying next door in your apartment. You know, there'll, be no, no, yeah. there'll be no garbage <laughs> trucks out here. We'll tell all the locals to cool it with a sawmill while you're recording. We'll set you up with a telephone so you can call each other and say good night. <laughs> <laughs> good night, John Boy. Over and out. Podcast. But, oh. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that uh, that actor is uh, Noah Beery Jr. Oh, that's right, that's his name uh, yep. from the Rockford Files. Rocky from the Rockford Files, another great classic TV show. <laughs> that show was almost the opposite of the Waltons in that you know Jim Rockford lived in a trailer near the city and was a detective. That was great. And where John Boy was like the most innocent person in the world, Rockford had seen everything. You know. Uh. Oh, yeah. I remember one time there was a scene in Rockford Files where the bad guy was going to come into the bathroom and kick his ass. And that's where jo- Jim Rockford hid. So he took all the, yeah. the liquid soap and spilled it all over the floor. And he kind of lured him into a certain part of the floor. And the guy slipped, boom, fell on the ground. And Jim <laughs> Rockford was able to escape. I was like, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want a, a new podcast where you just explain the Rockford Files. <laughs> yeah, it starts out with this answering machine, right? He, I can't yeah. come to the phone right now. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great intro. And then he's got you know, his buddy Angel. Come on, Jim. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, that show was a lot of fun for the time that it was made. You know, it was so fun. And I used to come on every day at two o'clock on Channel Twenty Six KMPH in Fresno. Growing up, it was a real good slice of the seventies because they took a lot of like footage of you know. LA in the seventies. Yeah. And like, you see things that you totally forgot existed. Like, Oh, Jim Dandy fried chicken. Holy cow. Yeah. I remember that place. <laughs> you know, like remember pioneer chicken. Oh, I do. That was a big treat in our house. Pioneer it chicken. Was, they were, they don't really do uh, Popeye's does it, but not very many places do very good spicy chicken. And I don't mean like, with buffalo sauce anyone can throw buffalo sauce on something but where the chicken itself the fried chicken batter is Mm. spicy uh and they used to do it and it was out of this world it was the best i ever had and i wonder if i would like it now you know like when you're a kid you tried certain things and you loved it then as you get older you kind of experience more and you you go back and you're like this this mcdonald's isn't as good as i remember yeah well, they got they got super run down for, you know, a lot of businesses will just stop advertising and that's almost the end of mm. any business. Yeah. But like they were a big they were I would say in their prime. They were to LA what In-N-Out is now. Oh, wow. 
where they were just like a big deal and people were like, oh, we're going to Pioneer Chicken. It'll be great. But then they just kind of got high on their own supply and gave yeah. up, you know? <laughs> yeah. That, it, it, it's like, you remember in uh, The Dark Knight Rises when Bane beats the hell out of Batman? Yep, yep. And he says to him at one point in the fight, he goes, uh, I, I didn't vanquish you. Victory has defeated you. Mm. And what he's saying is like, you've been a winner for so long that you've become complacent, you know? And that's what happened to them. And uh, the last time I saw them was like right when I first moved here. And it was just this like real crappy looking pioneer chicken. Mm. The, you know, it used to have like a little Italian chef on a wagon and the, the chef part had been like <laughs> someone had thrown a rock at it or yeah. something. <laughs> so he was dead and it was just the wagon. <laughs> and uh, they had, uh, you know, a place has given up when they're just serving any kind of food now. Yeah. Like yeah. it was, it's like you walk in, it says pioneer chicken, but they're like, we'll make you a ham sandwich if you want. We got stuff for like, we got whatever you need. And they yeah, closed down pretty shortly after that. Oh man. Yeah. There's nothing worse than like instant mashed potatoes with like really watery brown gravy. Yeah. It was like, like, it was all cafeteria food you're like, mm. is what it had become. You know who did that, who nearly uh, died, was uh, Little Caesars. Mm. You remember, like, when we were kids, you couldn't go anywhere. Like, if if there was a birthday party and they didn't have Little Caesars, <laughs> you, they were, like, ashamed of themselves. Yeah. They were like, I'm so sorry, we just didn't get call them in time, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was, like, a big, like, r- ripping open that paper Cause there was always, they sold them in twos, you know, mm-hmm. and it was like, it, it smelled really good. And it was a big deal. Everyone was all happy whenever little Caesars would happen. Then I think like, you know, it was the eighties. Everyone was doing a lot of cocaine. <laughs> I think the head of little Caesars did like way too much cocaine <laughs> and was like, you know what? I know we have the funniest commercials in the world. Pizza, pizza, pizza. And, and we're the best. We're number one. We beat Pizza Hut. We beat Domino's. Papa John's doesn't even exist. We're the best. You know what? Let's just stop advertising. We're Little Caesars. We're number one. We don't need advertising. Screw it. You know? Mm. No more advertising. <laughs> Five years later, <laughs> they can't give their stuff away. They're all attached to Kmart. Oh. things have gotten so bad oh damn you know and they're yeah. like i'm sure you remember this if you've been to a kmart anyone listening yeah for a while there little caesars was just there and they were like please take our pizza it's, it's for three dollars we'll give you a large pepperoni <laughs> pizza please yeah. take it please sir <laughs> <laughs> Have some kindness in your heart and take one of our pizzas. <laughs> I haven't been to a, a Little Caesars in years, but I I can tell you what I do know. Like when I was uploading up at the out in the boonies up at the farm, I had to go into a local small town to upload. And yeah. uh, at that point during the pandemic, they wouldn't allow you into the Starbucks, so you had to like you know use their Wi-Fi from outside. So I'd sit in my car with the AC, <laughs> and, and right. sometimes these these podcasts would take me like two hours to you know to the Wi-Fi signal. And there was a, a near, that, <laughs> near the Starbucks, there was a Little Caesars. And yeah. just the clientele was very different from Starbucks to Little <laughs> yeah. Caesars. Like the, the Little Caesars. <laughs> a lot like, of intensity at Little Caesars. Yeah. You know, like Starbucks, you had like everybody would come in there, you know. Uh, a lot of yeah. times moms that just got done exercising or whatever, you know, with their gear on or whatever, like little groups of women or, you know, you'd see old people, whatever. You'd see just different people, random people. Little right. Caesars, you'd usually you'd know they're going to go to Little Caesars because in the parking lot you hear, boom, 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 <laughs> boom, and then you'd hear like, "What up, mother?" You know, <laughs> and then like, <laughs> and then you'd see a lot of dudes with like lots of tats and going in. I don't know. I was just like, "What's up with that Little Caesars?" And then there'd be incidences sometimes of people backing up and another person's backing up and a hon- you know cars are honking oh, their horn. Like a- and- a gangster little Caesars. Yeah, it was like a gangster little Caesars or something. Like you could definitely tell. You could almost bet. Like, hmm, I bet you this car is going to go to Little Caesars. I bet you this car is going to go to Starbucks. Like you could. Yeah. You know. Well, there's one on like uh, I think on Santa Monica Boulevard still, and I've more than once seen it, what looks like 
it's either a parole officer or a guy <laughs> waiting for his parole officer <laughs> heading into Little Caesars. It's always those those two types going in. You know, like. Yeah, yeah. You're either running from the law or you're looking for someone that's running from the law. Yeah, or you're a bounty hunter or something like that. You know, like. I'm, I'm sure when Dog the Bounty Hunter comes to L.A., he's like, oh, remember, we got to stop at Little Caesars. <laughs> got to pick up a few extra you know, clients. Carbo load <laughs> before we <laughs> yeah. go in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got to pick up our, yeah. All right, let's do some Thanksgiving trivia. By the way, do you do you need the spoiler alert? Do you want to know if they sold Walton's Mountain, or do you want to know if they, they kept it? Can I guess, and then you tell me the truth? Yes. I think John Boy talked him out of selling it and kind of gave the guy a speech about how they'll never sell it and don't come back here. Did I tell you this or you just guessed it? I or, just guessed Or it's just that predictable. <laughs> like, it's yeah. it's kind of that predictable, but that that's my guess. That's I never pretty much what happened. So, so yeah. John Boy's the one that... Like, <laughs> they, they, so they, Victory. Yeah, they're sitting around the kitchen table. The dad is like... He doesn't know what to do. He's like, on the one hand, you know, this is our family history. Grandpa, like, was born here. Everybody, you know, I mean, it's been, been they've had it in the family since the 1800s. And right. there's so many memories, the first birth, the, I mean, all we this We all stuff. hit puberty here. Yeah, we all hit puberty. Yeah, they did. They There's a cave that they, uh, they all, oh, went, no. right around 13, they all discovered this cave. Like, you could see the initials, like, Grandpa, Walton, 1875, and then... Like John Boy. I love that, it, that even as a boy, he was signing at Grandpa Walton. <laughs> yeah. Well, he wrote like GW or something. but <laughs> Right. Because John Boy goes into the cave, <clears throat> and uh, he sees his 13-year-old brother, and he goes, oh, and then the, 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 the 13-year-old brother goes, you know about this cave? He goes, I sure do. You didn't. He goes, I used to come here all the time. I discovered it when I was around your age, 13. And he goes, look, and then you see his initials, John Boy. And he goes, and didn't you see Grandpa signed it over here? And he's like, wow. And he goes, I like to come into this place, and this is where I would get my ideas together for my journals and writing. And and the, and the, the younger brother was like, this is where I come to whack off. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. It's no nut November. No. He went, this is the whack off cave. No, exactly. We're all about 13. <laughs> the salesman's like, we also discovered the whack off cave. Uh, we're going to slide another cool million into that deal. <laughs> it's got the best. Yeah, exactly. They, um, so then that kid was like, this is where I go to practice my music. He goes, I, I'd be too embarrassed <laughs> to do it in front of the family, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. What if these are all just euphemisms? Like, this is where I do my writing. <laughs> yeah. This is where I stroke my pen, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You have discovered the cave, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. I, and then, I think so. <laughs> and then one 13-year-old brother was like, so what do you think they'll do if they buy this property? He goes, you think they'll keep the cave open? And John Boy's <laughs> like, no, they'll probably seal it off. And then the, the younger brother's still you know, naive. He's like, well, maybe when dad does those tours for tips, he can give a tour of it. And then John Boy's like, do you really think Pa's going to work for tips? He's like, and, and then it goes to music. <laughs> <laughs> then they go to commercial because each person's reflecting on should we sell sure, it? Should yeah, we keep like I it? said, the yeah. whole family has to make a decision. Yeah. And so then the power goes out or whatever, and there's a lightning storm. So then they're looking for John Boy. He's no longer sitting at the kitchen table. And that's where he gives the speech. They go upstairs and he's looking at the he's in the bedroom with the eight and ten year old sleeping, and John Boy is you know giving this heartfelt speech like it's it's not our decision. We've already gotten what we've got out of Walton's Mountain, all the great memories, and it's part of our fabric of who we are. But it's their future, and you know, blah blah blah. And then of course, it cuts to the end scene, and they keep the place. And Grandma and Grandpa are celebrating their fiftieth anniversary, and then they do the pullback with the with the camera, and you're hearing John Boy's inner dialogue where he's like. Grandma and Grandpa are no longer alive, but we had many memories there, and Walton's Mountain continued to thrive with our memories, our love, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It was really good. Very touching episode. Wait, now, was this the, the last episode of the series? No, it was like the second, it was like the second season. <clears throat> That's weird, because it's like, normally they don't give an epilogue like that until the series is done, you know. I don't know. I guess he does a lot of monologues. Okay. I, I looked into it. Like the Earl Hammer Hamner Jr., I believe his name is, the author that created mm -hmm. the series. And it's based on a, 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 
I think it's called The Homecoming, where he, <clears throat> it was actually a book also, and then they made it a movie on CBS, and I guess he was the voiceover artist for it. Like he, I, I read, an, I saw an interview with it, and they said that even, he said that all the uh, the, the professional voiceover artists sounded too, um, like a voiceover -y. He said that he actually had that earnest sounding kind of corny, if you will, like speech pattern style. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's one of those shows. I, I don't know if I'll always, you know, if I'll watch it again, but I enjoyed that one. Everyone I've told about it has not been that interested. So <laughs> I'm sorry I made an episode about it. But. Well, I, uh, I don't blame you. I blame the network for putting it on. Uh, yeah, it was, you it, know. it was successful for like nine seasons, man. I couldn't believe it. I don't know if successful is what it was. I think it went yeah. unnoticed it for nine seasons. Yeah. There was nothing else back in the 70s. I think the, I think Warren Littlefield or whoever was in charge was like, uh, they woke up one day and like, wait, are we still airing the Waltons? What the hell? <laughs> I, I got to fire somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They, um, they, uh, gosh, what if I, you know, like I said, the Waltons will sedate you. What if this podcast episode is really what people start listening to when they get their wisdom tooth removed? <laughs> They're like, God, I hope not. I, you know, my, can I tell you about, uh, my black kept my... waking us up, but Darren kept putting us to sleep with that Walton talk. <laughs> <laughs> it was torture. It was, it was like <laughs> sleep deprivation. <laughs> I remember when I got, uh, I had most of my wisdom teeth removed. You know, you have four of them total and uh i had three of them removed without incident by my dentist yeah but then i had one that was growing in a uh, lower lower right side the very back tooth of course tooth number tooth number 32 which i just had removed yeah and uh it was growing in almost sideways mm. and so i had to have full-on like dental surgery to get it removed yeah where they had to like kind of like shave away part of the gum and then you know yank it out but it was like really embedded in there it did not want to come out and so they loaded me up on novocaine and they were like oh we're gonna have dr max come in and deal with this <laughs> Because uh, I'm not strong enough to do it. My uh, my dentist, who's a lovely, lovely lady, uh, Dr. Jan Smart, shout out to her. But um, she flat out told me, she was like, I am not strong enough to get this tooth out. Wow. So we're going to have Dr. Max do it. And they kind of put a neck brace on me, like that, that braced me to the chair. Oh, geez. <laughs> and he came in, and I'm pretty sure Dr. Max was not an actual dentist. <laughs> I think he was a cage fighter that they put a lab coat on yeah. and they were like, here's the situation and here's a pair of pliers, <laughs> go to work, you know? And cause a dentist, when they come in to do a, a surgery, does not look at you real intensely and go, you ready, bro? <laughs> he's like he puts that's his, what dr max does though <laughs> and so he's, he's like chalking up he's like chalking up with his hands like it's a, he literally yeah like but he put one hand on my lower jaw like his oh hand in my mouth uh, like to, to brace my lower jaw yeah and he he threw he took pliers they they were they were like dental pliers, but they were freaking pliers. Dude, wow. And he goes in there and he's like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, and, and you, I don't know if you've ever been around bodybuilders very much. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. They have to do a feat of strength and they can't do it. <laughs> it's the most frustrating thing in the world for them. They have this look on their face like, I've done all this core work. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a loser. <laughs> and he's starting to get embarrassed. And I see like a bead of sweat going down his face. And I try not to look at him. And that triggers him. He knows that I'm kind of like disappointed <laughs> in, in his abilities. And so he summons up like all of his fucking strength, right? And he goes, 
<laughs> and like just goes Aah! oh god and rips it out and Ooh. his hand goes up to the sky wow with the bloody tooth like he man <laughs> <laughs> and he goes yeah and i was so into it that i went yeah <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and, like three or four other dentists come like peeking in they're like what the hell is going on <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, that was the most intense. See, I think that's uh, why the do- the doctor told me, he goes, he goes, because uh, I go, hey, can I do like that Novocaine thing where they, and he goes, you know, we, I really, you know, I recommend putting you under because it's just less yeah. annoying. He goes, it's less annoying for both of us. And, and I, and I think that's why, because you're just, you know, <laughs> it gets less annoying <laughs> yeah. for both of us. I know. Uh, at first I was thinking, what do you mean annoying? Like, but I realized like he, <laughs> he doesn't want me to be awake and you hear all the all that stuff so it was just i was like whatever i'll just do it. yeah all right let's do some thanksgiving trivia now i don't know the answers i mean i know i have the answers in front of me so i'm gonna i'm gonna you and i are, are gonna guess at the same time and you'll just have to trust that i'm not cheating <laughs> okay <laughs> but let's put some money on it pal no sure sure yeah the tooth fairy just paid me no <laughs> oh, that's right. I should have some Tooth Fairy money coming in if I was a kid. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you got four bucks coming your way. <laughs> that's right, boy. Four bucks. Actually, only one dollar because I only had one removed. But okay, here we go. I wouldn't tell the Tooth Fairy that. <laughs> that's what, true. What she doesn't know won't hurt her. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thanksgiving occurs on the fourth Thursday in November, the third Thursday in November, November 26th each year. I'm going to say the third Thursday in November. You are... Correct. No, it's the fourth Thursday, November. Well, then why did you say I was correct? Because I didn't look at the answer yet. <laughs> you just assume I know everything. I know I do. Here, let's. <laughs> well, I, I didn't really. I felt like I kind of cheated because that was the one that I did look at before we started the podcast. So I didn't want to. Um, I, you know, I think I guessed wrong because I feel like I was cheating because I, I was just looking at my calendar before we started. Oh, and oh, I saw yeah. exactly when Thanksgiving was, and I was like. I think I subconsciously was like, guess wrong. Just guess yes. wrong. <laughs> I know. I think, yeah, yeah. The, okay, um, I'm, I don't want to cheat on this one either. The first Thanksgiving lasted, th- and the answer is three days. Okay, so th- this one I have, I absolutely do not know. Okay, <clears throat> there's three okay. choices. Which of the following was not served at the Pilgrim's Thanksgiving meal? Which of the following was not served? Cranber- okay. Cranberries, corn, mashed potatoes, rabbit, chicken, wild turkey, dried fruit, Venison, fish, goose. Run, run them by me again. This is n- which one was not served? Cranberries, okay. corn, mashed potatoes. Number two, rabbit, chicken, wild turkey, dried fruit. Three, venison, aka deer meat, fish, goose. I'm gonna guess the third one. And I'm going to guess the first one. I'm going to say cranberries, corn, mashed potatoes. That doesn't wait sound... before before yeah. we hear the answer. You're telling me that you believe the Native American culture, yes, did not bring corn to Thanksgiving. Hmm. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say they didn't because I don't think corn grows everywhere. I think okay. corn only grows in certain areas. All right, let's hear let's hear the truth. The answer which was the following was not. The answer is number 1. I was right. Holy cow. Yes. It was not served at the at the uh, at the first Thanksgiving? Yes, because uh yep. I guess cuz you'd have to think about it. You you, you, you might don't, not have been in season. Yeah, cuz cranberries, corn, mashed potatoes. I mean, it's, you know, if it's mashed potatoes sounds iffy <clears throat> too, yeah. Uh not, now that I think about it. Ooh, okay. Which Indian tribe taught the pilgrims how to cultivate the land and were invited to the Thanksgiving meal? Was it the, forgive me if I mispronounce these words, number one, was it the Apache, the Wampanoag, or the Ch- Cherokee? Ooh, I'm going to, that is a total guess, but I'm going to say the Wampanoag. Me too, because that's the one that I'm less familiar with. Boom, right. we were, we're correct. Ha <laughs> ha. I was like, they wouldn't even be in here if it wasn't <laughs> the end. Know, know, you know? I know. All right. Approximately how many... Oh, tri- I have a, yeah. a little, like, sub-question that uh, you're a very... You have a very musical family. Yes. Uh, who uh, is best known for performing the song Cherokee People? 
Cherokee people. Um, is it Tim McGraw? No, it's a. It's one of those. It's a guy and the blank. You know. Oh, uh, Cherokee. And his Nation. name is a historical reference, also. Oh, uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders. There you go. Yes. <laughs> See, you know, you may not have got all the trivia questions, but you know stuff. Yeah, I know stuff randomly. I'm like, I'm like horseshoes. <laughs> I kind of get in the area. I don't always nail it, but I'm sort of close enough to to do it. <clears throat> I was pro- hoping you would guess Engelbert Humperdinck just because it's a fun <laughs> yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> Approximately how many turkeys are eaten each year on Thanksgiving in the United States? 100 million, 280 million, 500 million. 500 million. I'm going to agree. Nope, we're wrong. 280. Dang it. I was close. That was my next guess. Ooh, here's a good one. Oh, hold on one second. Let me cough. And we're back. What is a snood? Is it A, the loose skin under a male turkey's neck? <laughs> that is the chode. <laughs> a hat worn by a pilgrim. Or a hot cider drink served at Thanksgiving. Yeah, how is it spelled? S N O O D. Just type that into Google. <laughs> uh, no, no, I was just uh, thinking that might lead because snood sounds like hood, H O O D. Yeah. So I'm gonna guess hat. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess. male turkey's neck. Oh, I was right. It's a male. T- it's the male turkey. Skin, and, yeah. Which they use to make hats. That's so. true. I'm, I'm hey, nice hat. Where'd you get that? Gobble, gobble. Yeah. <laughs> this is a smooth hat. <laughs> All right, here's. let's just do the last one, then we'll move on. What utensil was not used by the pilgrims to eat Thanksgiving dinner? What utensil was not used by the pilgrims? Was it oh. knife, fork, or spoon? Spoon. I'm going to say spoon. The answer is fork. What? What? Wow. That makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Spoon, I would would be my yeah. I uh, think they they might be wrong. They might be wrong. They might be wrong. Yeah, you never know. You remember last time we did this, and you you knew all the uh, you were like. I, I, I don't <laughs> see how they could have like so many arrows in the culture and not have forks. I know. And what you about how, how great was the spork when you first discovered a spork? You're like, this is awesome. <laughs> I never thought it was awesome. Everyone else seemed to think it was awesome. <laughs> I was like, this isn't a, a spork. This is a spoon that sucks. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't know of anyone that ever successfully yeah. grabbed anything <laughs> with the fork part of it. I think I first saw that in actually Pioneer Chicken. I think that's where I first saw a spork. Well, KFC is famous for them. You get a spork. Uh, every time you get a meal at KFC. Well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's where I, I can relate somehow. Mashed potatoes, corn, chicken. But it's the uh, the edge, uh, the fork area leaves a lot to be desired. And the spoon <laughs> is very, very tiny. <laughs> so to me, I was like, this is useless. I get where they're going with it, but this is like, I would like actual a silverware. Sport. You know what I what I thought would be a good invention, but maybe it won't be, and there's probably a reason. But you know, a lot of times when the people when they hand me like a, a, a fork and a knife, I don't like to use the knife. I just cut the food with my fork. I always thought the the side of the fork should be like a knife blade, so you could just kind of like press down and it would cut easier. But then again, you might injure your mouth. Yeah, you would slice your cheeks all to ribbons. Yeah, so maybe that's why that hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> And you wouldn't you wouldn't know it if it was like razor sharp, right? And then as soon as you drank some wine, you'd be like, "Oh no!" <laughs> exactly. Or some lemonade. Ah, oh, my mouth stings. <clears throat> so uh, along that same Walton vibe and Thanksgiving, I uh, somehow got a, a hold of a, a catalog. They right. they mailed it to us, the Vermont Country Store, and I'm not even into this kind of stuff. But for some reason, I was like, "Man, it just kind of makes you wish you." I, you actually grew up in a cold area. I, I grew up in Fresno, so the closest we got was like fog. But when I look at some of this stuff, I'm like, man, I wish it was cold enough here where I could wear like scarves and like flannel and you know puffy jackets. And but but you know it's L.A., so you know it, it might be 70 degrees, so you're just going to be sweating. But in this catalog, like I got this great picture of this dude wearing like like red long johns, drinking coffee. I'm like <laughs> man, like. 
that seems like a cool. That seems he's having of, the time of his life. You know what I mean? He's got like the the. You got like the cool brown fuzzy slippers. You've got oh, they actually had like deer skin driving gloves. I'm like that looks so cool. Like you're, but it wouldn't really work out here in L.A. You know, the deer skin driving. Gloves. Yeah, no, I yeah, I wouldn't tell anyone that they were. Deer skin for sure. That's true. Plus, I really don't even need them. Why would I? Need them? My hands would be all sweaty and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'd. Re- I mean, th- that's what those catalogs are for—to make things that they can't really sell look good. You know. Yeah, well, you're. It's more like your dream of like, like oh, I'm gonna. It's like I'm living in a Hallmark card. But then. Yeah, because the truth is, how often have you ever had coffee in the morning where you weren't interrupted by something? <laughs> That's true. And even with the coffee, you're like, you know, I mean, nine times out of 10, I'm pretty hot in the morning. Like I, you know, I have been sleeping in bed with a comforter on and I'm like, I don't really get cold in LA in the morning. Like, you know, maybe, maybe when I'm up at the farm for sure, but like, or on the road, you know, when you're yeah. in another state, but here in LA, it's like, I'm not really that cold. But yeah, that guy, like he, he has those nice looking pajamas and there's probably like a bookshelf behind him, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, wooden artisanal chair and, you know, table and everything. And uh, out the window, it's like uh, light snow on the branches <laughs> right. and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that sounds great. But no, nobody has any of that crap. <laughs> it's I... all you get. All you have is the pajamas. <laughs> When right. you order that, yeah. you know, yeah, it yeah. doesn't give you all that other stuff. Oh, where's the snow globes and the happiness? Yeah. <laughs> and the, the warm, glowing fireplace and the <laughs> the supportive yeah. wife. And, you know, the yeah. Where's all the good stuff? Where's my grateful four by- children? <laughs> yeah. yeah, my four by four, and I and I save the day by you know. <laughs> it's like those commercials when you you know like they show like some you know. uh the Ford 350 Ranch, and the guy's going over boulders, and it looks so exciting. But in reality, you're like having a hard time in LA, like taking a car to the underground parking garage. Like it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> yeah. I can't parallel uh, park. Dang it! Please don't uh, do stationary turns because it'll mess up the power steering. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, you know, you say okay, but I know you're gonna do it. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a buddy that moved out here from Omaha, Nebraska, and he had like a, I think a Ford 250, and he, you know, he he did comedy, but he also did construction. So sometimes he was, you know, he he would go with me down to the comedy store, and it's like he didn't even try to pull it into the lot. He's like, nah, let's yeah. just. He's like, I'll just drive, park it at Pink Dot or whatever, and then eventually he just got a Prius. He's like, it just makes more sense in <laughs> yeah. a big city like than. Driving yeah. around with the truck like I that. wish they just had a little more oomph, the uh, Priuses, you know, because <laughs> uh, uh, any any time I'm behind one on the freeway, I just want to do the pit maneuver on them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm like this. You need to catch up to speed. It's you're. We can't all adapt to you. You have to adapt to us. You, you know what, Mike? Uh, I was going to ask you if you want. Um, I want to do one more thing, and then, and then, uh, but I do want to. I'm thinking maybe do like a bonus episode with you, like have you on again, like fairly soon, and we'll keep the next one like really short. That way, we can give people a little extra uh, entertainment during the Thanksgiving holiday. Is that cool? We're uh, we're running out of time, but um, I have a quick question before we go. Tell us about the Thanksgiving special that you do, the overdose. Oh, uh, this is, it's not a, it's, it sounds like a comedy special, but it's not, it's a, a sandwich that I make whenever I'm like the worst guest to Thanksgiving. Cause <laughs> whenever someone invites me over, I bring Tupperware and I'm like, whatever you guys aren't going to eat, I'll take it home, Nice, you know? And, uh, and I'll be like, you keep all the rest of the Tupperware, but just fill me up a thing with like some leftovers. Cause I know a lot of that stuff gets thrown out. You know, mm-hmm. and so because like it, it only lasts a couple of days, so you have to move quickly. But what I do is I'll buy like a really good, like a sturdy sort of sandwich bun, like a hamburger bun or something like that. Then what I do is I take all those leftovers and I make the best sandwich you can possibly make with them. And it depends on what you got you know, like what leftovers you're working with, but you find a way to work all of them into the sandwich. Now the, the one I made last year was I took mashed potatoes and that was the bottom level gravy, 
than another hamburger bun with just gravy all over it. Stuffing. Uh, turkey on top of the stuffing. And it doesn't have to be a lot of anything because it's going to be a big sandwich. So uh, some turkey on top of that. Cranberry sauce. And then the top bun, I'll butter, but also put more gravy. Mm. There should be gravy at like every level pretty much yeah. somewhere because it'll be real dry if you don't do that. And then you put it in the, like a toaster oven or an oven for, uh, at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. You know, it, it'd be good to wrap it in foil. That'd be probably the best mm. way to do it. And then, uh, I like to put it with potato chips and that way, because a lot of stuff, there's going to be spillage. It's one of those kind of sandwiches. There's stuff's going to spill out. But uh, it, when that uh, all the stuff spills onto the potato chips, you just eat those too. Mm. And uh, sometimes for fun, I'll get like cranberry juice and eat it with that. You know, if I, if I didn't get cranberry sauce... I'll have like a cranberry juice drink to go with it. And it comes out real nice. Man, that sounds amazing. I'm getting hungry really just hearing that. Oh, I, I should also add it's best to toast the buns. And when it's done, <clears throat> this is a, like a Gordon Ramsay thing. You got to let it sit for a little while. Like, don't just take it right out of the oven and start eating it. Cause he has talked about, with uh, burgers, you know, like those big, like $30 burgers that he does. Yeah. They're like thick and greasy and everything. And he goes, Oh, the bun fell apart as soon as I tried to eat it. And now, <laughs> now it's all over the place. And he said, I thought people knew this, but I have to tell people now, give it a few minutes or not a few minutes, give it like a minute at least to let everything uh, congeal. And then you'll be able to eat it and it won't be as messy, you know, but a lot of people, when they get a big burger like that, uh, they start eating it right away and the bun just soaks up all the grease and just falls apart, you know, but yeah. if you let it sit for a minute, it won't do that. And I didn't know that I'd never heard that before, but I tried that this year with the, the sandwich and I was like, Oh, this is actually, it works. It actually works really well. That's man. That's great. I'm like, I'm getting all hungry. All I have had today so far is yogurt. <laughs> well, yogurt and the penicillin that the dentist gave me. Well, it's it's one of those things where it's like it's not quite as good as the Thanksgiving dinner, but it's pretty close, and it's a a fun thing to eat. And you can make like two or three of those over the next couple of days after Thanksgiving. Uh, if, if you're really hungry. Oh, and like sometimes if you have stuff that's more like if you suspect that some of the stuff's really going to fall apart, uh, throw a slice of American cheese over that ingredient mm. and it'll kind of hold it all together. That sounds great. Um, you know, <laughs> Mike Black, man, thank you. Let's let, let, I want to get you back and we'll do, like I said, a quick little bonus episode and, uh, dude, thank you so much for coming on and, and, uh, Hey, have a, have a great rest of your day. Everybody listen to Darren Carter. We all know he's the party starter. So if you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to the pocket party.